Okay, more on constraints, adequacy of constraints. Let's look at a few examples here. Um, so whenever we are, whenever we're analyzing a structure, we need to, as we said in the previous video, I think it was the previous one or the one before, that if if you don't analyze it properly and you see that you've and you don't notice that you don't have sufficient equations to solve the problem, then you're going to be wasting your time because you've got too many unknowns for the amount of equations, the number of equations you have. So let's look at how to analyze this. So in this example, let's here's we have a bl this blue block, and let's look at the constraints. At A, we can see that this constraint over here will stop the this box from moving in the x direction. So it's got a constraint in the x direction, very good. And what about the vertical direction? Yes, it's got this constraint here in the vertical direction. Okay, so we've stopped it from moving in the x and in the y direction. But now this constraint over here will also, what if, if ig ignore this guy here, if you would then go and apply an external force, right, then you would see that this this object would then rotate. So what do you need to stop it from rotating? You can put in another constraint here and you can see that it is adequately constrained. Okay? Adequately constrained. Well, then you could say, but hold on, I thought you said we can't have two um, constraints in the vertical direction. Perhaps that's what you thought. Oh, we've got this A, Y over here. This stops it from... And we've got um, whatever this point is in the vertical as well. Well, the point is we have three unknowns and we have three equilibrium equations. So this is adequately constrained to, to be constrained in the X, the Y, and the rotation. Now, what about this one? Again, this stops us from moving in the X, the Y. But now this guy... If you analyze this, you can see that if I were to apply a force there or there or somewhere, that this specific setup would not restrict it from rotation. So this is called incomplete fixity. This is called complete fixity, adequate constraints, right? Number of equi equilibrium equations equals the number of unknowns. But incomplete fixity, partial constraints, means that this this will um, the the constraints are not sufficient for for equilibrium conditions. Okay. So the point is, okay, when you've got, let's put it this way, the number of equations and the number of unknowns. Let's put it that way. When the number of equations equal the number of unknowns, then we have we have adequate constraints, right? Adequate constraints, and we can solve it using the techniques we're learning in this course. If the number of equations are um, greater than the number of unknowns, that means that we've got incomplete fixity, partial constraints then what that means is that we will ha most likely have an acceleration of the system. And then if we've got the number of, un of equilibrium equations is less than the number of unknowns, then we have a statically indeterminate, a statically indeterminate system. And this over here is a statically determinate, which is what we deal with mostly in this course. Okay? So let's look now at this guy. Again, we can see that this is partial constraint, incomplete fixity. This does not uh, resist any forces in the vertical direction. Yes, it will it will stop motion in the horizontal, but not in the vertical. So again, incomplete fixity. Uh, and here we have excessive fixity, redundant. We spoke about this in the previous videos. That means there's too many constraints. This is this one over here. Okay, The number of equations is less than the number of unknowns. 
the number of unknowns is more, there are excessive constraints. And so we have redundant constraints. So if we take that away, then we've, we've got adequate constraints. Okay.